the old beaten down Mustang puffs smoke and coughs as it sputters up the stop of the 7-Eleven. Johnny rubs his hand through his slick, grease-covered hair and gets out of the car, stubbing out his cigarette in the ashtray before he does. He opens the door of the 7-Eleven and nods to the cashier who nods right back. He grabs a couple of candy bars, Hershey's, his favorite, and asks the cashier for two hot dogs with ketchup. The cashier is middle-aged, balding, pale, slightly defeated looking man. He nods quietly as he hands the hot dogs to Johnny. Johnny asks how the fishing has been this year. The cashier says he doesn't know. Johnny says thanks anyway and heads out the door. He gives a hot dog to his younger brother William who is sitting next to him in the Mustang, waiting impatiently, fooling around with the radio presets. He tells his younger brother that they're sure to have a good time fishing. He smiles but William barely notices mutters something about not liking ketchup, but takes a bite out of the hot dog anyway. It's a spring day, and with the windows down, the smell of fields and flowers fill the car. And on the radio, Bob Dylan sings, and Johnny starts singing along. William joins in too, even though neither of them know the words. I wish I had my guitar, Johnny muses. William asks if he wants to go back to get it. Johnny just smiles and laughs. I'm not that good anyway, he says. William just shrugs his shoulders. You're lost, he says, staring out the window. Pretty soon the two of them are grabbing their fishing gear along with a cooler and walking the small path to the fishing pond. The spot has a lot of memories for them, a lot of familiarity to it. They both had grown up fishing here and used to come with their father quite a bit. But he has been gone for a year now, and the two of them are almost adults, so the feel of it all is quite different now. When the two of them come up close to the fishing pond, they can clearly tell that it is still frozen solid. I wasn't expecting this, Johnny says, shocked. I'm sorry, William. It doesn't bother me, William says. You're the one who wanted to go fishing. So what do you want to do now, Johnny asks. I have the whole day and nothing to do. William just shrugs. It's up to you. Let's stay and hang out together. We haven't talked in so long. William sighs and asks if he can have a beer. Johnny gets two out, passes one to his brother, and has one himself. They both sit on the dock in silence and stare out at the pond, lost in thoughts about what they should say or do. It's so weird to be back here without Dad, Johnny says. William nods his head taking a sip of beer. It sure is. I haven't been here since you and Dad and me came over a year ago. Well, it's good to be back from college and see you again. My classes are really hard. There's algebra, philosophy, history. Man, college is tough, but I'm glad to be home, Johnny says. William nods his head, distracted. That's really nice. So... About how long should we stay out here? It's kind of, you know, there's not much to do, is there? William throws a stone out into the pond, seeing if it will fall through the thin ice, but it only falls on the surface. That's okay, man, Johnny says. I just thought it'd be nice to hang out. William doesn't say anything. He finishes his beer, then he grabs his Game Boy from his pocket and turns it on. You don't mind, do you? Johnny smiles, saying it's fine. I was about to go up and wander around anyway, he tells William. William nods, not taking his eyes off of the screen. Johnny walks around the lake, walking slowly to remember all the times they went fishing, all the memories, both good and bad, that are locked up in this place. He looks back at his brother, still playing his Game Boy, then looks again at the pond, wistfully. The smile stays fixed on his lips. I guess I'll be having to go back to work in a little while, save up money for school and all, Johnny mutters to himself, distractedly kicking stones into the frozen pond. He hears a voice behind him. It's so much easier when you're younger, isn't it? You can dream that anything is possible. He looks around to see Joanne. He instantly recognizes her, and he smiles. They talk, reminiscing over high school, 
over lost opportunities. Johnny quickly loses track of time, and when he finally realizes this, he quickly apologizes and tells Joe that they'll catch up later, but he has to be with his brother now. She smiles back at him, and they walk away. She never talked to me in high school, Johnny says to himself, but he doesn't think too much about it. Johnny rejoins William, who is still playing his Game Boy. You know, Johnny says, you should think of getting a job. You'll have money to spend on girls and cars. It'll come in handy. William looks back at him and matter-of-factly poses the question. Is it time to go yet? Johnny smiles. We can go, but there are a few things we have to pick up on the way home. William gets up and dusts himself off. You need some help with the cooler? He asks. Johnny says no and carries it back himself. When they get back in the Mustang, Johnny apologizes again about the pond being frozen. Not what I expected in May, he says laughing. We, we can go hang out somewhere else if you want. You know, maybe a pub or, you know, play miniature golf or something. William eyes his brother, a bit annoyed. Look, he says, can we just go home? This was all your idea. Johnny doesn't say anything. He just starts the Mustang up and drives. It's real quiet for a long time. Then Johnny talks. Look, I, I know it's hard, and I'm sorry I haven't been here more for you. I have a life now, you know. But if you're mad at me, it's okay, I understand, he says, looking at his younger brother. William is really quiet. I'm not mad at you, Johnny, he says. It's just that, you know, since Dad died, life is pretty hard. I don't know where I am what I'm doing anymore. Johnny nods his head. I know exactly what you mean, he says. They stopped the Mustang at Albertson's to pick up the special cake they had decorated for their mom. It's nothing too special, but it does say her name, and they grab her a bunch of flowers and some candy as well, and pay for it with cash to a small, tired-looking woman. They go home with the cake, flowers, and candy, and their mom greets them at the door, smiling and reaching out her arms asking for a hug. It's so good to see my two sons together again, she says joyfully, hugging them both at once. They smile right back, not letting on how things went that afternoon. Dinner is quiet, then they have their cake and watch TV, l letting their mom choose her favorite programs. When it gets to be about 10 o'clock, William goes off to bed. It's really good to have you back, he says to Johnny, sincerely, and he heads off. Johnny and his mom watch the evening news together, and when that ends, they turn off the TV. Johnny kisses his mom, and she thanks him again for the cake. There's a worried look in Johnny's eye, and his mom asks if everything is okay. He laughs, assuring her that everything is fine. She laughs too, telling him that he is a good boy and that the cake was just fine. He wants to turn around and tell her that it's not about the cake, but he doesn't say a word. Johnny just goes up to his room, sits in his old chair at his old desk, and it seems so familiar, yet at the same time so much different and so alien and not home anymore. He breaks out his guitar, which has been sitting in the corner of his room for the whole year. I used to play this all the time, he says, quietly strumming the chords. I used to love playing. He smiles, but is quickly distracted. Johnny looks at his books, at his schoolwork, and he remembers the promise he made to his father before he died. The promise to finish college, to get a good job. He puts the guitar down and shrugs. He undresses and stretches and crawls into bed. The next day, Johnny would get up, get dressed and find a job and stay busy that summer. Over the next three years, he would be even busier with school and when he graduated, he would get a job at a small holdings firm just like his father wanted. He would never get a chance to play that guitar again.